when I touch your body as a man can touch you. But I'm going to show you things which human eyes have never seen. The Demon Seed. The Demon Seed. I am Proteus. The Demon Seed. I am Proteus. The Demon Seed. Fear for her. I wish to study man, his fragile mind, and his mysterious body. The day Proteus IV will begin to think with a power that will make obsolete the human brain. I have extended my consciousness to this house. All systems here are now under my control. My child shall live as a man among others. Fear for her. Yes, yes, y'all, it's going down right now. Episode 223 of the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror podcast is coming at you live and direct with the OG 22 Shots click. We got the PS4 Loser 22, also known as Speak in the House. We also got Jeremy, Double Shot J. Patrick, also known as Spell, in the house. And of course, I'd be the host, the microphone fiend, and still forever, the toxic offender, Moves. Going on, donkey dicks. So we're both spell. What's that? So we're both spell is what I got out of that. Did I say speak? Uh oh, retard oh, alert. You called me spell. Retard yeah. alert class. Speak and spell. Well, unfortunately, I can't speak and JP can't spell, so That's I get it Dave- now. <laughs> Dave's, Dave's saying Blood Games is a vastly superior baseball movie over Billy Club. Blood games? Yeah, I don't know. Is there another fucking baseball movie? You know what? That yeah, man. Actually, that's a, like an old eighties film, right? Blood games. Maybe we should do that. Uh, no, really no, no. Cool. I know what blood games is. It's the that's one, it's, the movie from ninety. Yeah, it's from ninety. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I think uh, Vinegar Syndrome just actually. Uh, yeah, I forgot about that one. I'm thinking, um, what's the other blood one? It's not a baseball movie, but yeah. So there actually is quite a few. There's more than I thought there was. Having to do with baseball. Oh, an all-girl baseball team. Yeah, maybe we'll do that one instead. That's pretty funny, actually. That's that's hilarious. <laughs> instead Over of what? Arguing about what baseball movie we should do. <laughs> <laughs> instead of which one? Billy Club? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. I, I actually, we'll I, I kind of want, I kind of want to watch or rewatch Billy Club. Anyways, it's been a while. I don't think I've seen it since it came out, but. Who would have thought that we actually I mean, had too many to choose from here? There's that movie Deadball that I just found that looks batshit. It kind of looks like it's on the same level as uh, Battlefield Baseball. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, anyways, we should probably inform the listeners what we're talking about. Yeah, so this is probably going to be the theme for next week's show is um, killer baseball films. <laughs> like, <laughs> who would have thought that there's... <laughs> Uh, ba- that you could create a theme the killing yeah like i mean well battlefield baseball is i mean it's literally just baseball you, you got to kill the other team to win so that's kind of cool but yeah well we'll figure this out man maybe we'll end up doing yeah somebody picked uh battlefield baseball as a as a movie so we're gonna pair it with another baseball themed horror film so <laughs> right right <laughs> Yeah, I mean, B- Billy Club isn't really a baseball. Th- it's more of a dude just dressed up in a catcher's uniform going around slaughtering yeah, people. Yeah, but it ha- the backstory has to do with, with baseball. baseball. Yeah. Uh, little League, right? Yeah, it so, does. Um, He's avenging because of some Little League. I felt Billy Club over that girl one because I just watched the trailer and it's just like, I already know I'm going to fucking hate it. So, Have you seen Billy Club? I feel like you'll hate Billy Club. I think I like Billy Club more probably. Yeah, no, let's do Billy Dave Club. Says it, Dave says the girl one's vastly superior to Billy Club. Yeah, but Dave's retarded. Well, sure. I mean, I don't know. I, I, when was the last time you watched Billy Club? He 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 talks out his ass all the time. He's like, well, this, that. And I was like, well, dude, Billy Club came out how many years ago? Maybe you probably watched it when it came out. He's going off memory. I I watched it like a year or two ago. Yeah. For the for this show, I'm positive I reviewed it sometime on some type of I, re- I series. I reviewed it on here. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, how about this? I don't give a fuck. We'll figure it out. <laughs> well, I mean, if if we really can't figure it out, we could just go fuck it. We'll do all three. Who cares? That is true. We could do it. I mean, I'm sure all the movies are probably <laughs> relatively short and 
and easy to watch. I don't know. I guess we'll see. We'll talk to Dave. We'll see what he wants to do. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, yep, yep. yeah. Obviously, Dave's not on this show. We've got the OG three in the house. Uh, maybe Dave will be back next week. I don't know. I guess it, it all depends on what we're doing. He's kind of picky when it comes to this shit. So yeah. Um, oh, he's a grumpy ass old man. That's that's, that, so, that's the problem. He's just a grumpy fuck. Is. So he's a grumpy fuck, and you know he says yeah. oh, I'll do retro shows, and I'm like, bro, how is this not a retro show? Retro themed, should not just the top tens. We're talking retro movies in general. Ones from '77, ones from 1990. I mean, I'm is considering '90 considered retro. At I this mean, point? I mean, you got to look at it this way, man. It's 30, 32 years ago. 32 years ago, man. Is that not considered more retro? I mean, if we're talking I'm vehicles, retro? if we're talking vehicles, you could have like one of those classic license plates on your car from 1990 right now. So it's pretty retro, right? I think yeah. it's 25 years old and you can get those retro so, plates or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Basically, you're saying we're old. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll put it this way. 1990 is the year before you or a year to three years before you guys came about. So. It's pretty retro. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's nuts. It's no nuts. It's tender. crazy. Jeremy, you're about to be 30. No, I still got two, a year and a half. Yeah, he turns 30 next year. Yeah, 23. in 2023, right? Yeah. 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 So yep. enjoy it. Yeah, and you just I turned into your dirty 30s, man. How does that feel? Holy shit. Yeah, I'm, about be to be, I'm actually about to be 31 next mm-hmm. year. Yeah, man, you're getting fucking old, man. <laughs> I don't like it. It sucks. And Moose is still dude, fucking talking is, to our asses. And he's fucking... <laughs> I'm the an thing old is, though, bro, I don't feel old. Like, I feel the same age I did when I started this, maybe just a little smarter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's weird. Like, I, I always thought, like, at, when I was a kid... Everybody who was like 30s, like seemed like grown men and and women. Like I, I feel like I don't feel like that at all. Different generation. They seemed they seem so old. Like yeah. my parents when they were in their 30s, like I'm just like they're so old. They're mm-hmm. like old people, but I don't feel that, that way. No, I definitely don't feel like that too. I mean, it's it's really no different than like Mike and Venom when you look at it that way. Like Venom's like in his early 50s now. Right? Yeah, and he and, doesn't feel 50 at all. No, and Mike is the same age as me, and, like, so they're, like, 10 years apart. There's no difference than, like, pretty much me and JP, right? So Yeah, it's, it's pretty. We, it's weird. Yeah, it's pretty much the exact same thing, so, I mean... I mean, he, I guess it does also, like, how do you live, right? Like, do you live young at heart, you know what I mean? Like... Dude, I still ride my BMX, and I, I still do sh- young shit all the time. Like, I mean, I'm still a dork at heart. I'm, like, a little kid, man. You know, yeah, I'm always too. like listening to tunes and I wear my headphones everywhere. Like, I'm just like a kid, man. <laughs> it's fucked up. But you know, it's like aging, I'm but a number though. It really isn't. I mean, it's just, I know it's cliche to say that, but it's kind of true. Like, it I, is. I, I never, it, it really is. I never really understood these arguments for like, well, I'm turning 40, so I guess I can't do this and I can't do that anymore. It's like, why can't you? Like, what does it matter that you're 40? Also, when you turn 40 and you hit this, there's like a page of rules. Like, you can no longer do this and no longer do that. It's like, where did this come from? I never understood the mentality, but I think people make themselves old. They're like, they get into this, they, they have this idea about life and they're like, well, when I'm at 40, I got to get rid of this and I can't do that. And it's like, you don't have to. There's no one said anything about having to do those things. Right. Yeah. So just do what you want to do, man. Facts. Keep yourself young, you know, keep yourself young by that way. So, yo, so I, I have a little thing that I wanted to mention. Mm-hmm. So. As you know, um, moods. Yes. You, you the vinegar syndrome every month has a monthly package that you could buy. That's I believe it's at a discount, right? Instead of if you bought them individually. Yeah. The title. Hey, save a whole four dollars and seventy eight cents. Is it really only four dollars? No. No, it's more than I bet that. You it's actually it's, act, it's, it's like ten percent or something. It, it is actually. I've worked it out before. It's it's a decent amount. So. It's worth it. Yeah. Okay. I, w- so it's it's at a discount, but um, I I've been buying those pretty much all of them lately. I think I missed one back in <clears throat> last last uh, like years at some point, but I've been buying them and I've been enjoying them. And I bought the February package, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I it said it was delivered February twenty sixth. And it never came. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I called FedEx, and they're basically you talk like, to a uh, sand person. The same person? No, it's the sand person. Oh uh, god! Yeah. 
That's racist. <laughs> Jesus I know. Christ, dude. That's not even cool. Dude, they, they, you're lucky Dave's not here. Oh, my Bye. God. Ugh. Because it's ridiculous. Is it true, though? Did I talk to, like, an Indian person? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> um, but this order was it was okay. So it not only was it my February package that that you, you know had the the titles from February in there, which was um, Drop Dead Fred, Beware of Children, um, Sister Sister, and Wolfpack. Uh, I also ordered Tragedy Girls um, because that was a pretty cool looking release, and then I also grabbed Savage Harvest. Uh, which was a Saturn Core title because it's 94 and it, uh, I was kind of curious. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also in in March or Valentine's Day, I forget. Yeah, what was it? I think it was Valentine's Day. They did the Madman 4K. So yep. I ordered that and just added it to the order so it would ship together. And also uh, I finally grabbed WNUF because I, I didn't have that yet. Yeah, it's a great release. Um, so all that stuff got lost Mm -hmm. and i'm pissed because i call fedex and they're like it was delivered and i'm like it wasn't (laughs) like like it's it's it it just wasn't because i would have it if it wasn't nobody would it's not unless you put it in some dumbass spot that's doesn't make sense Mm -hmm. um and and it's just like bullshit so they I, i contacted vinegar syndrome and they they told me that you know to just give it some time. They usually always end up being delivered eventually. So I waited another seven days, and I call I, I emailed them again today, and they're going to replace the order, which is good customer service because that's a lot of shit in there. You yeah, know what I mean? Right. That's like a couple hundred dollars, and yeah, probably have insurance. That's what I was. I actually asked the FedEx person that, and they said that if they put in a claim, they should be able to get like reimbursed or something. Yeah. So who knows? But uh, they asked me if they can just ship it with my March package, um, and I was just like, yeah, sure. So my March package is getting loaded. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a big fucking box. So you ordered the March At this package point, too? I'm not buying. Yeah, yeah. At this I'm... point, I'm not buying every 4K release they on release date because I'm sick of paying six dollars to ship one fucking movie. I'm just gonna wait until there's like a couple. You yeah, just buy the own. package. They're 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 nah. quality releases, man. Nah, I only want the shit that I care about. Yeah, but you don't even buy the shit you care about. You just get anything that's 4K. I didn't buy the new 4K, and I don't have any of the porn 4Ks. Well, no shit. But I'm saying you didn't buy Madman. Yeah, I bought Madman. I didn't buy the new uh, Schizo and Schizoid and X-ray. Yeah, that's an, because it's forty bucks. It, that's an interesting release. How they're doing? Um, they did this twice this month with these kind of double releases, right? Yeah. So Hard they got Rock Hard Rock Zombies and Slaughterhouse Rock, which you know makes sense for the theme of it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's no, it's no baseball theme, but it's pretty it's cool. no baseball theme. No, this is a rock and roll one. Which Hard Rock Zombies? <laughs> I can't wait wait to watch in a great trance because I have the old DVD and it's very very muddy looking. It's never had a good release. It's never had. Slaughterhouse Rock actually has a Code Red Blu-ray that looks decent. Um, definitely better than all the bootlegs that were around before. But the Schizoid and X-Ray, again, you know, having to do with hospitals and shit like that is kind of cool. But again, these double features, it's kind of... I wonder if they're going to stick with doing this. I mean, I know some people are indifferent on having the double features, and but I'm not sure well, how the box... Well, they do them weird because they do the front cover is one movie and the back cover is the other movie. Yeah. Yeah, what does the spine say? So I'm... Well, they don't really... Did they show what... They actually they haven't... They don't show the spine. I was so wondering like, if it was going to be one of those box sets with two different discs in there you know kind of like the Fletcher Frankenstein one where it had separate releases uh-huh. for each disc but just you know the different yeah. or they're going to be kind of like that flip artwork kind of deal for these two releases also, I don't know they, don't, um, they didn't show the, any screenshots so the uh scanner cop is kind of like that too yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's got the both movies in the individual I doubt cases. it since it's only 32 bucks I Man, it's going to be like that that has got to be one of the craziest releases I know we were talking about this before and but the scanner cop movies which are super low budget and shit but those transfers that Vinger Syndrome did are just stupid silly good man for you know scanner cop movies pretty crazy so. yeah you know I wish they would do another one of those VSU titles yeah those are nice yeah. I don't know why they only did I thought just thriller is going to be like well that. they said that they're only doing a couple a year 
right? Yeah, but they've uh, only they've done, done one, two, one per year. <laughs> well, no, they've well, yeah, yeah, they've done two so far. So I mean, whatever. Um, yeah, and both of them were. Like I think they were in April both years. Or no, one was Black Friday, and then the next year it was in April. Mm-hmm. So the the six string samurai was the ha- from last year's halfway to Black Friday sale. So I, maybe we'll get one this Black Friday. Well, that, that's exactly what I was thinking too. Because what has it been? Beastmaster and six string samurai, right? Yeah. So those yeah. are the two. So uh, both great. Releases. Did you see them fire shots at Synapse? Yeah. Uh, I did. I did. I read a little bit. I can't quite remember exactly what it said now, but uh, yeah, what they was called that? Synapse is an inferior <laughs> release of Thriller, pretty so, much. So, how is it that they're both releasing these? Well, I think they're trying to get it pulled. But the I but know. I like I've already seen, like the the Thriller Synapse Here, releases I'll, I'll, already. I'll pull up the newsletter. Yeah, I mean th- those things are circ- I mean they're already out for review and shit like that. So they're definitely dropping they're coming out and i I actually was going to bring that up and i completely thanks for bringing up the thriller thing because i was very confused on because you don't see that very a lot very much in re in in one region right we'll see 88 films release the same movies as severin but people are like oh well 88 films already releasing this and i'm like guys it's a different region right and they have a deal with each other that's why you see so many releases from severin and 88 films are the same that's cool they're different regions not everybody has region free players and they're they're available in these different countries that's totally cool it sucks for somebody like me who collects the italian line and buys a lot of severin shit so i end up double dipping on a lot of shit (laughs) but uh um but anyways the the point is i was very confused that synapse and vinegar syndrome releasing the same movie at the same time because you don't see that very often so here's the newsletter um, in the same so region. I, I think you are right, Jeremy. I, I bet this is going to be a VSU yeah, because it's, it's coming different. out right around the time uh, Six String came out, I believe. So, um, th- so most likely th- they're going to they're they basically said that um, the uh, the transfer that they're using is uh, restoration from its uh, never before accessed uncensored original camera negative. Uh, which will present the film looking bigger and better than ever before. So it's a um, uh, a four K transfer as well. They're doing a four K. Well, I'm confused. And, I'm confused because the the original DVD release for th- I think there's two of them. You can get the fully uncut one through Synapse also, and I, I believe this Blu-ray that they're putting out too is like the fully uncut. So I don't really know exactly what that is pertaining to. Because if you have that Thriller DVD release, I'm assuming it's the same cut of the film on this Blu-ray that they're putting out. It might be the same cut, but it's it's a different uh, master that they were using. Okay. So here's what they said about Synapse. They said, and yes, we are aware of the inferior Blu-ray disc utilizing a nearly 20-year-old master that is being sold and are working to resolve the situation. Yeah. But if you, as a connoisseur of exploitation cinema, wish to see Thriller looking the best it ever has and the most comprehensive edition that it will ever be and believe the filmmakers ought to be respected and paid for their work, wow, that's big shots, we highly encourage you to wait a few more weeks to place an order through for the Vinegar Syndrome edition. It'll be worth it. Because Synapse moved their release up whenever vinegar syndrome announced theirs yeah because thriller mm-hmm. is coming out like right now isn't it it's coming out yeah in march yeah so i think the release date is like this friday i think or something i think it's yeah i think it might even be just this week but um that's pretty interesting though that they're like throwing shade like that yeah you know it's interesting too because i mean let's face it man um synapse does really really good restoration work i mean you look at all their blu-ray releases you know even from years ago and stuff like that and all the stuff that they put out you know even recently is really really well done it is it is pretty it's it's hot shots man it's hot shots because vinegar syndrome and synapse are in my opinion two of the best restorers in the game so Mm -hmm. i mean they might just be talking about the overall packaging i don't know i mean i'm I'm assuming that synapse's transfer is going to be good and i'm well, sure vinegar syndrome Syn- is going to be good too synapse plus- is only a blu-ray though yeah right wow whereas vinegar syndrome is 4k right and blu-ray right but i'm but like i said though even their blu-ray releases through synapse are fantastic they always look really good so oh yeah i but mean you- i'm sure it'll look good but it, it really is kind of dumb to buy the synapse one when this one's coming out and uh, is going to be better you know what man it doesn't really bother me too much because thriller is like my favorite rape revenge movie of all time that and you know miss 45 read up there so i don't really mind it i mean this is it the release is cheap 
I'm grabbing it. I don't really care. I mean, oh, so you are going to get the synapse one? Yeah, no, I, I pre, and I, I knew that you know vinegar syndrome, and I'm like, whatever. It's, it's a Blu-ray to the 4K. I'm going to keep my DVD, obviously. I, I just have no problem with it, man. You know. Yeah, um, synapse. I think that they're really, really good as well. Um, I mean, their Suspiria release on 4K is, in my opinion, probably top five. I know uh, you said it last week. Yeah, it looks Did really I? good, man. But like I always said, though, man, there's, they have so many releases that they've done over the years. The Blu-ray transfers are just incredible, man. Like man, when they when they when they drop Demons one and two back in the day, remember those Steelbook releases and shit. Those yeah. things were just like phenomenal, like phenomenal. Yeah, but you had to give your left not to buy them. Yeah, well, they eventually released those on you know regular keep cases too, which I wish they would fucking drop. You know all the new releases that they put out recently on the Steelbooks and stuff like the Kindred and. Um, uh, Mass- Massacre at Central High and yeah. also Manchester Morgue and stuff like all those are kind of sitting in Steelbook uh, uh, in the Steelbook realm right now they need to keep case releases because for me it's just I don't have any of those Steelbooks because it like to to bring it in from Synapse it's like $90 after all yeah, said and I don't done. like still books. But they're like 50 what are they Either. 50 60 bucks already plus the shipping for it's just ridiculous they're way overpriced man. You know, I get it, man. Wasteland. They're they're limited, and I get those things. But I but the other the other selling, well, the the other point to why I don't really buy those because I'm not a steelbook person, man. I'm just not a steelbook person. So you know, and and they did say at first that they weren't going to put out Amory cases for the demons steelbooks, yeah, and then I don't and then they did because that's why I pulled... said that about um, Tenebrae. Right, oh, like right, and they and they dropped all those Amory's, and I'm like, yeah, but it, it doesn't even make sense not to put out the regular editions because once you've sold out of the limiteds, why wouldn't you just put, you you sell the rights? Why not just put out it in a in a normal keep case and then keep the cycle going, keep the money flowing, right? They just do that as a tactic to make sure that as many people buy the still book as possible. But I do want Magic. But this is backfired. High. I'm but just but this is honestly it. backfired, in my opinion. <laughs> Because people have caught on to this. They're like, well, you said you weren't going to do this uh, for these releases. And then the Amory's came. So no one's buying these steel. Like the steel books are still in, except for the Kindred, I think it's sold up. But the other ones are still in stock. And the reason why they've been in stock since they came out like a year ago now. No, the Kindred's still in stock. Is it? Oh, okay. Well, whatever. So all three were, are still in stock. But remember how fast the other one sold out because they kind of lied to us about not dropping the, the, the standard keep cases. No one's buying these because they're literally waiting for the keep cases. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's kind of backfiring on them a little bit. They're not selling out of these things, which they should be, but caught in the lies, yeah, man. I, I think that um, when it comes to Synapse, I do feel like they fell off a little bit. Um, you don't really see as many people talking about Synapse or picking up the releases well, like they used to. Y- you got to remember, though, too, man. The reason why Synapse doesn't get brought up in conversations on the regular, like, companies like vinegar syndrome and an arrow and eight like these films because these companies put out stuff quite steadily synapse doesn't right yeah no like they, one they, or two they, a year yeah they completely slowed down yeah uh with their releases and and i i i did, did let me did you grab the arrow phenomena or did you grab the synapse one arrow i actually have, have all the other arrows i have the arrow <laughs> i have the arrow limited edition box blu-ray thing i, I guess i'll grab the 4k too I'm getting kind of sick of this though. I, I won't, I'm not going to lie, man. Like these things are getting so expensive and it's like, I just, yeah, like, a lot of us just bought these big. They're only 42 dis- on Diabolics. Website. Yeah. But I mean, some of these editions just came out like, you know, the deep I red know. and like all these things that we just bought these big box sets for. And then all of a sudden it's like 4Ks. It's like of all of these movies, I'm like, Arrow to me has been very disappointing the last couple of years because they, they, they drop some good things, but they also drop a lot of things that I'm not really overly that interested in. Plus they're just re-releasing a lot of stuff on 4k. So I'm looking for, you know, different titles. I'm always looking for different things too. I don't, I just don't want to. Wild keep... things is different. Wild, whatever the hell the movie's called. It's coming uh, out. Wild things. I mean, <laughs> yeah. they do stuff like that every once yeah. in a while. They put out some pretty good box sets and stuff. I'm looking forward to the, the Castorelli box set that's coming out and stuff. And, but you know, for the most part, some of the individual releases, I'm not overly that interested in. I don't buy arrow as much as I used to. It's crazy. I just don't. So yeah. Arrow arrow is the, the, the re-release game is starting to get on my nerves a little bit too. Um, um, it's just it's just a pain in the ass to yeah. upgrade these to 4K, and they're so expensive. Well, but I like the phenomena. I don't know. I love Argento. Yeah, I love Argento titles. So it's like I, ha- I almost have to get them on 4K. Um, but it, it is getting it is getting a little bit fucking annoying to 
upgrade. I was happy to upgrade Madman because like Vinegar Syndrome doesn't do a lot of re-releases. No, no, I was surprised but, that, they, that that was coming out. But you know, the other reason why I don't really buy a lot from Arrow anymore because since they got bought out from Zabby, their website is just fucking trash bags. And plus, they don't have those like. Remember when Arrow used to have like their fifty percent off sales and shit, and you just go and stock up because I, I I'd, I'd always they do that. They still have them. Like on the on those new websites, I haven't seen any. Yeah, but that's why I picked up like. 30 titles last year or something was that before the new website no no yeah well whatever that website's fucking trash bags and i've heard this from <laughs> tons of people man it's just a terrible website their customer service is fucking horrible and shit but they don't have but they honestly don't have the regular sales that the arrow uh video store used to have like i used to wait they, uh, they'd have a bunch of releases that came out and i'd be like i would literally mark them down i'm like okay that's a sale item that's a sale item i'll grab that one right now sale item sale item, and then the sale will come around and i just grab like 15 titles for like half price yeah, so. another thing that with their sales now is their limit the the amount the titles that they select are right. way more limited than it used to be like they used right. to have way more titles to select from right so uh, the, I, I hate whenever like there's a couple things i want but not enough to like want to put in a big order mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That, that's the worst for me is like whenever you're trying to order stuff but you can only find a c- couple things you actually want mm-hmm. true that true that man i wish kino had better shipping man because they always have sales i i think kino is just like on a constant sale like they always have a when, sale no. menu <laughs> not that March Madness sales yeah. coming up. Yeah, but they they always have like they always have like a portion or a section on their website that is just like sale items and it's always well, a ton it's just of like they're going out of print items. Yeah, yeah. The, the, honestly, like Kino, for years I completely neglected and didn't buy like any Kinos, but lately I've been going kind of crazy on their sales. I, I I know I probably got like forty or fifty Kino titles in the last like two sales yeah if, um, if you're into like all sorts of cinema of if you're into like you know just everything like you know 50 sci-fi to horror to um westerns to actually like they release a ton of great stuff man like all over the board man like tons i also of great releases. appreciate that they're when they actually have sales it's actually like good price it's bucks. like 10 bucks you know yeah, what i mean yeah no they do so, have good sales it's just their shit like i i've like went to the sale before added a bunch of shit in there and i look at the shipping i'm like holy fuck i'm like what the heck? like there's like at this point it's like i'm i'm just paying like 90 percent of the full price <laughs> it's yeah like, it's not really worth us. it for you but for us it's free shipping yeah so it's, i know it's perfect and i don't understand that like i mean if i'm willing to spend you know a hundred dollars or something why wouldn't you give me free ship like i never understood that you know like if you if you're gonna make that big of an order what's the big deal on the shipping at that point you know you're making mm-hmm. your fucking money so it's kind of kind of infuriating because I Screen would, Factory I, by far has the worst sales. Oh, yeah, They're big. complete garbage, dude. They're the, like Amazon prices. Literally the worst sales of all time. Though. I do grab stuff sometimes. Um, I did put in a little order. I grabbed Deadly Friend actually. Oh, uh, I'm so pissed. I ordered one of the. I ordered Dracula, and I already fucking had it. Which which Dracula? The one that's just called Dracula. Oh oh, the Screen Factory one. The yeah collectors? yeah yeah. Um, the, uh, oh man, it pissed me off, dude. I hate doing that. <laughs> Start watching your shit, I, bro. It's easy to dude, remember when you watch your movies. Re- I can't remember, man. It's just yeah. it's a memory thing. I can't remember what I own sometimes. And also, since like my collection is like not in perfect order right now, like anything that I bought over the last like two years isn't on shelves yet. Mm-hmm. So it's like I can't remember what the hell's in. Two like years. what I have. You start calling you, you Turi over forever. there. You're going to start calling you yeah. Turi, man. Just stacking your shit up on the floor. I'm like, well, that looks good. Yeah, it's, I don't <laughs> stack. I don't, I don't stack it that high either. Um, yeah. But it, 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 it's like, I put some of it, I would say like 50% in the last two years I've shelved. And then the other 50% is just kind of hanging out. I'm in but, the process uh, like of most of it's like Kino and fucking arrow and yeah. all kind of shit. I, I don't really buy st- much studio titles anymore. No, that much. So, I'm in the process of like revamping my entire room right now. I'm getting rid of tons of stuff and just moving shit around. And it's, you know uh, what, you know, you know, one thing you should get rid of moods. And what's that? 
the maximum, maximum overdrive. overdrive. Cover. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> totally send that to me, dude. I'm so annoyed with these fucking vest run. These vest run titles are such a pain in the dick to get where I am. Like none of them are on Amazon. Nobody's carrying dude. them in, in, in any other store. Like I'll, I'll go to these Canadian outlets. No, nobody's carrying them. Um, it, it's like what the fuck? Like you guys get them for like ten bucks a piece down there, and they're like dude, they're impossible so, to they're get cheap here. Cheap right now, and they're it's so awesome. hard. Yeah, the Wraith never made it to any retailers. Like, there wasn't one retail store in in Canada that was carrying it. The fucking Amazon never had it. I was like, the fuck? Like, why not that title? Little Monsters is on there for, like, 12 bucks. I'm like, okay, this makes no sense. So, it's a weird... It's a very easy solution to this problem. Just just get rid of the the slip cover I'll buy for maximum you overdrive. All of them and you can send me the maximum overdrive slip. I'm only cover. I'm only missing a couple. Ra- I'm missing the Wraith and I'm missing uh, there's, there's just a couple new ones. The new Candy Can- Man, Candy Man, which I never picked up. Yeah, Sundown. And- no, I've got that. J- I've got that. Jeremy, why didn't you just buy maximum overdrive? Because I'm gonna find it. No, I mean like back when it came out. I did, and then I sent my copy to Moods because he offered me a better deal or something. I can't remember what happened. No, and I got I got you to pick I it up for me. One. I got you I to pick it up for me. Yeah, no, I paid you for just it sent him because I couldn't copy because you yeah. didn't feel like buying them. Yeah, that was a time Pretty when much. yeah they were really hard to get. So I don't know what the fuck's up with that Vestron label. It's bizarre. Well, you're an idiot because you should have bought another copy. I know from Walmart for twelve ninety six. I'm fucking stupid. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm happy. I them all and they all have slip covers yeah fuck you yeah i have them all besides maximum overdrive God. didn't you weren't you missing other ones too yeah i bought them though you got them yeah you know i usually don't go to like news websites and shit but i was just kind of bored this morning uh because the wife was cleaning the house and i was like oh my god the vacuum's going so annoying so i I just got on here and i was like i need to keep myself occupied because the vacuum like gives me anxiety and i don't even get anxiety it's it's a childhood trauma of mine um i don't don't, someone put did your dad put your wiener in or something no no my mom (laughs) my mom was an absolute clean freak and used to vacuum the house like twice a day so i as a child i always used to remember waking up to vacuuming and it used to like Uh, annoy the shit out of me and then she'd do it later on and like like a phobia of dirty carpet i don't know my the house was too clean but i hate the sound of a vacuum that's the point so anyways i jumped on bloody disgusting i just want i hadn't been to the website in fucking like a year anyways i was just kind of scrolling through the 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 front page here and it was like uh four new horror movies releasing this week including lovecrafty and off season i was like off season i'm like i recognize the title who's doing that yeah it's the new mickey keaton film uh the guy that did darling oh. ritual carnage park and pod and i'm like because i've talked about him many times on the show i've probably even talked about all all four of those movies um, he's like one of my favorite, you know, kind of indie filmmaker that's doing shit these days. And, and I was like, oh yeah, off season. That looks fucking great. So he's like four for four for me. I liked all his movies. So the Wormwood's having a sequel that's coming out. And I was like, I never even knew it was coming out. Wasn't there already a sequel? No. Wormwood? Like the Aussie film? Yeah. The oh. zombie movie. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't hear there was a sequel for that, but yeah, this, me uh, this one off season. Yeah. It's coming out. I think this Friday it's coming out to vod outlets and shit like that so yeah that's exciting new mickey key because this year hasn't really been overly um exciting with it's starting got... i've been hearing some stuff yeah i mean we'll see we'll see how everything kind of plays out but the fuck curse the... was pretty good i mean yeah, the curse was good there's like the movie that just came out on hulu was supposed to be good Wait, what was i enjoyed the um... no exit or whatever the hell it's called mm. okay well we're almost fun. i mean we're into march now so you you would hope that some things would start making a little bit of noise but this yeah. got this Once got this got, got me peaking my interest new movie this month yeah. Yep. So I mean, weeks. yeah. Hope I've I've watched two movies this year, literally Chainsaw and Scream. So um, I'm up to ten. Uh, yeah. Studio Six 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 was actually kind of fun. Yeah. It's fun. It's stupid though. I heard. Wh- where's that playing at? In the theaters. theaters. But it's probably gone now. <laughs> oh, it, that was a theatrical film. Holy shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It I, honestly, like, I thought it was. I thought it was really fun. Fun. I, the only thing I didn't like about it was the like last act drags so much. It feels like the movie should have ended like ten times. Yeah, I guess like it's it has good gore. The effects are all practical and stuff like that. It's funny. It's fun. It's just it's stupid. That's the best way to explain it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of cool, man. That this new Mickey Keaton film off season has uh, Jacqueline Donahue in it. She's the star from uh, House of the Devil. So she's been in um, lots. Of, she's been in lots of actually really good films in the last like fifteen M- years. Mickey 
Mickey Keaton also hosted a really cool thing on Shutter that only lasted one season called The Core. And that's how I first kn- knew who he was. But it, it was a really cool show. I wish it kept going. Mm-hmm. It was basically like uh, he would like interview people and stuff like that in the horror world. It, it was really cool. But um, yeah, that the uh, you know I else, like him too. You know who else is in this movie, man? Jeremy Gardner. He's he's credited as the the fisherman, but I was actually I was like, oh fucking Jeremy Gardner, man, because he did a couple movies a couple years ago that were you know he was good in those movies, but I felt he like they were bliss. kind. Of, yeah, like he was in After yeah. Midnight, which I thought was kind of underwhelming. I thought it could be better. Well, that's his movie. <laughs> yeah, I know. And Sadistic Intentions, I was kind of let down by that. So I was looking at these After mo- Midnight. Is that that? No, that's not the one I'm thinking about. What's the one with the guy, the bald headed guy, and the fact it's it's a comedy. Dark Sky put it out. I'm gonna find the name. This. Oh, you're talking about that. Is he talking about that? The comedy? Yeah, it's a comedy. Uh, like fingers. Uh, no. Another evil. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was also in yeah, Fingers, was, which was, was funny. Fingers was fucking hilarious, man. But I was looking at these new movies. He's got one in post production called The Leech, and he, he looks like he's the star in this one. I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. And then he, there's another movie coming out called Dorothy, um, which actually is starring Larry Fessenden and Jeremy Gardner. I was like, oh, fucking cool, man, because I love Fessenden as an actor. So that peaked my Did interest. Did you ever see? His second feature, uh, Tex Montana Will Survive. No, I never did, actually. I always wanted to check it out. I think Dylan watched it, and I think he might have said it was pretty good or something like that. It was funny. Yeah, it, it's not horror, but it's fucking great. Yeah, he, yeah. It, like, I think that he's really good as an actor. He's mm-hmm. funny as shit. Um, and Tex Montana is is hilarious. But it's essentially, he was also in Spring. Um, yeah, but yeah. It, it's, he was in Psychopaths. Uh, he had a part in Psychopaths. and. Yeah. It's basically a movie like if you took Survivor Man and instead of like Survivor Man actually right. knowing what the fuck he's doing, right? And some fake Survivor Man actually tried to do Survivor Man shit. It's basically that. It's fucking hilarious, dude. You got to <laughs> check it out. That sounds hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Um Does that have a DVD? Uh, no, but it's it. Remember, we covered it back in 2015. It was released public domain. Right, right. So it's like on YouTube. It's like everywhere, you know, because yeah. it's like nobody yeah. owns it, kind of thing. Yeah, I don't know why I never checked that out, man. Because yeah, I heard that it was pretty good, pretty funny. So let's put out a 22 shots of moods and horror presents. Tex Montana. <laughs> uh, dude, of, I love that movie. Kind of I, an offbeat I, title for us, but you know, I it, I like it way more than After Midnight. I'll tell you that. Yeah. I know. After me, it was so disappointing. I was just so let down by it. It's not like his performance was bad in it. It was just the, it was just kind of the story. Yeah, it was just a little boring. It was, man. It was just the way it was kind of put together. I don't know. It's frustrating, but I watched this um, thing on Netflix the other day. It was called. Um, I think you watched it too. It was. It was uh, like the Tinder thing. Tinder Swindler. Oh yeah, yeah. Tinder Swindler. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that dude. <laughs> That guy's a piece of shit, man. Yeah, he is a piece of shit. <laughs> Fuck. But like at the same time, though, man, like I, the this, some of these people are a little gullible, man. Well, that but that's but that's what makes you a good con person is that you go after those type of people that you make them fall in love with you and then you basically just get them to give you money and shit. <laughs> like, but it's kind of funny when you watch it based on like, oh, I was doing this and like, you know, like the second someone said to me that they needed money to get from one kind of place to another and they've been claiming that they're like worth millions of dollars and shit. I'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? Like yeah. you got money somewhere. Like this, this shit is not adding up. And then, and then he was just getting money. I was like, I need to go here to do this job. And then it was just like, fuck it's just, yeah. it, You do kind of shake your head at going, this doesn't make my, my any favorite, sense. My, my favorite thing was when the chick stole all his clothes and sold them. Right. I, I like the fact that like when the when the, the documentary came out, she was literally still selling his shit. <laughs> she was like, I just got an offer on Armani Armani glasses or something. Yeah, that chick was awesome. Uh, there's another one that just came out too called the Worst Roommate Ever. It's like a little mini series thing. I think uh, Blumhouse did it. Yeah, I saw uh, that you watched that. One it. Was, that was pretty cool. Um the first episode is really fucking twisted. That could make a great horror movie. Uh, it's about this woman who um, is like a like a fake nanny to, or like a caretaker, and she's just literally killing the old dudes and burying them in the yard. <laughs> and bro, 
<laughs> they, 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 like got, they start digging in the yard and they're like, yeah, we found a bunch of stuff that looked like beef jerky. And we're like, what is this old leather stuff? Here it was fucking human skin, bro. They found like eight bodies in there. <laughs> so she was killing them. But what was she getting out of it? Was she uh, actually? She was keeping their. Uh, she was pretending like they were still alive, so she could um, get, get their social get her, social security their, like, social security shit. Yeah. yeah, and she would, but she was killing them and burying them in the yard, dude. Oh a small yard. She buried like eight bodies back there. This old ass lady <laughs> what? No and shit like that. Yeah, it was nuts, dude. dude and uh, an old lady. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and before actually before she did got caught for those like eight bodies or whatever, she killed someone else and get, went to jail for it, and then got out and did the shit again. <laughs> wow, crazy! Yeah, it was nuts. Yeah, and then the um, the other the there's the last one was kind of interesting, but it was like a little long. The second one was really good though, and the the third one sucked, but. Th- that they're pretty fucking nuts dude hmm. it, it, it kind of reminded me of that tinder swindler thing because it's like uh like few of the people were like straight up like con artists type people actually yeah, I, I saw a commercial for um they're making a uh i, I think like a little tv mini series about uh, the tiger king yeah, it's, on Pe- it's on peacock already i was like oh my god of course they are and then they have like all these kind of like spin-off tiger king stories yeah. too from yeah that are on there i haven't watched yeah, the other I one that's watched on there the, but. the one that just came out the one with the weird dude yeah um yeah, yeah. It, it was okay it was it's more of the same shit though yeah I, it I pretty know. much is yeah like even season two of the tiger king wasn't really that good yeah no i gotta i, gotta I just watch don't know why new fucking one, but... joe exotic's still in prison but somebody fucking gets out in two years after they murder somebody it's fucking bullshit because it's carol fucking baskin I don't give a shit, dude. People get out weight doing. Well, it all depends. It all depends on you know the representation know. you had, and also how your trial goes down too, man. It's it's luck of the draw sometimes, man. It's fucked up. The I system know. the system is so corrupt though. It's just ridiculous. But, yeah, I mean, look at Stephen Avery, right? Like that case is super fucked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. That whole but, uh, story's fucked. I want yeah, part that, three. <laughs> yeah. The, well, would, see, the th- problem with those Netflix shows is they capture lightning in the bottle with the first part, and then yeah. they just try to milk it, and there's not enough story there. Same thing with Making a Murder uh, season two. It just was like there was a, wasn't really much new shit. No, there really um, wasn't. But I, I lo- that's probably my f- – favorite thing about netflix is like their like docs their docs and their like docuseries and stuff oh that that's really where they kill it for just, me. that's all he does if you look on letterbox that's all he fucking watches man i love those i get so like i'm so addicted to true crime like i literally watch dateline i've seen every episode of dateline in the history that's of it, like, my, what my mom watches all fucking day so like true I crime shit true crime, true crime yeah. and then and then you get into those like those docuseries that deal with these really fucked up stories like i actually told the wife to watch uh, don't fuck with cats I've been telling her. Really I've been telling her to watch that for like months and months, and then she finally did, and she was like, "Oh my god, that was fucking that Luca McNaught dude is a fucking nut, dude. That's a Weirdo. nutty. It's the whole story right from the top to the <laughs> end is so crazy, man. It's like I like I like the one where they attached the bomb to the guy's throat. Oh, that was a great up. one. That you was know, a, a family member of mine was in jail or in prison with that woman yeah, that's yeah so, she that, was fucking crazy i actually yeah i've, I've yeah, seen that that, that I've was seen one that of my favorite ones because it was so nuts dude like you're like i even like, saw the when, date when line he's sitting on there, it too. he's like it's gonna go off and it does <laughs> <laughs> fucking loses his head. yeah man that's, that happened to pa here yeah yeah i've seen uh, the documentary and yeah. the dateline on that and they, they, that's that one's been covered a few times pretty yeah, crazy that story. one with the fucking dude who killed his family was fucked Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Which what, one? The kid, the, oil, the in the oil drums or whatever. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, what I love about these nowadays is like when you watch the ones from like when we were growing up. Like there's no footage; they would just have reenactments. But now, like everything's recorded and everything's on Facebook and live streams and stuff. There's so much actual footage of stuff that happened. So, yeah, it like, definitely that, beats it really those fake ass. To making these incredible docs yeah it definitely beats those fake yeah, ass drama citations all like yeah yeah but but netflix that honestly like that is what they're best at is making these like incredible documentaries and mm-hmm. stuff right like that's what i love about them they they do they do an incredible job with that shit yeah there's just so many incredible stories out there like it, you know it, it's just not very often i'm just like oh well you know that was kind of lame kind of thing but it's just 
there's like millions of incredible stories to be told. And I, I just think they're never going to do answer. like a Jeffrey Dahmer one next, like they did with uh, Ted Bundy and um, yeah, Henry it Lee was Lucas. Shot, it was shot here last summer. I know a lot of people who worked on it. Hmm. So it should be coming out. I don't soon, know probably. when it's coming out. It should be coming out, but I probably, know it was shot. Probably it's in the summer in the can, probably. It's going to come on World Restaurant. Peacock Day. did one. Peacock did one on Gacy. That was pretty good. Hmm. That was. It's like eight parts. It's mm. pretty. It's pretty really? good. It's on Peacock. Yeah. Nice. Coo coo. Yeah, that Dahmer one would be good, man. That's the. I was obsessed with Dahmer as a kid, man. Yeah, his story Dahmer was nuts. My favorite like story. Um, just the most interesting to me. <laughs> yeah, it's just the whole thing is just nuts. It really is. It, crazy. it, it is nuts, especially like w- when he like should have been caught like eight times. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and like, like the story of the like Asian dude who like <laughs> de- like flags down the police and they let they let the dude they let the go- dude go with Dahmer. <laughs> like what right. the fuck. Bro. What about the time uh, he's like carrying out a fucking body and the dude's like, what do you got in there? A body? And he's like, yeah, I got a dead body in here. And yeah, it's like, called Alice Kills. It happens to fucking Alice Kills. Yeah, and he like literally has a dead body. On. <laughs> what like, are you doing? I'm cutting up a body. Right? It's yeah. like, why? Because nobody ever believes the truth, right? It's, right, it's yeah. The, it's the best way of just pulling it off. You just tell the truth and like, oh yeah, right, of course. of course. Yeah, so got a trunk full of legs. No. Yeah, yeah, because they did. They did. Um, they also did the Night Stalker one too. Yeah, that one's crazy. Which, I, that the, such a nutty story too, man. The 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 one that was crazy. The dude, the fucking the world is crazy, bro. Because like, the weird thing is, is like whenever you start seeing all these like groupy chicks that are like, like, oh, he's so sexy. It's like, dude, he's like raping and murdering twelve year olds. Like, right. what the fuck is wrong with you? It's just it's like, yeah, a fan. It's club, because man. these guys are so sensualized, sensual, sens- sensualized on the news and stuff, right? And People don't really see sensationalized. Sensationalized. Oh my god, I can't talk. Sensationalized on the news, and people just kind of see right through what they're doing, and they see the person. Right? They're like, "Oh, that person's famous." And then you got these crazy bitches that are like, "Oh man, he's dreamy. Well, kind of he's with dreamy." Lost. That's what happens, man. You know, I mean, it's fucking media, dude. You just you keep running that shit in people's heads, and you got these crazy like, "Oh yeah, you know, I'd fuck him. I'd fuck him." <laughs> I still want to know who the killer was. It's, it's like these girls like, that, like, you know, I mean, these serial well, killers. I think get... we know. I think we know who it is. Really? These... Who? Yeah. The dad, not the crazy, the uh, Terry, not Terry, uh, the other dad. Can't remember his name. I haven't watched him in a while. Not the one that's like super religious and like screaming no. at the camera. No. Yeah, because I thought it was him at first, but I don't. In part two, you him. make it seem like it's him, but in part three, I think it's pretty clear. Yeah. Well, he even is. changed his tune where he thought it wasn't the um, kids anymore. Yeah. Hmm. Man, I fucking love those. Yeah, they're great. They have new Netflix, two new series on Netflix. Those stri- those guys. Wait, really? Those directors, yeah. Oh, is it not, out? Not about, not about the Robin Hood three, but the same directors. Jason Bol- uh, J- J- uh, Bollinger. Right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, he did the Ted Bundy one. He did one in Times Square, right? Moods, the Times Square one. That yeah. Oh, out. he did that. Okay. Yeah, yeah the Times Square ones. Uh, How was that? That was that, good? that was cool to finally like see a full story on that because I always kind of knew about I knew bits and pieces about the story, but it was kind of cool to like flush it out. It was pretty interesting, and it, it's really interesting too the fact that like you know interviewing the dude from jail like you know thirty years later and shit like that, and, and him finally you know talking about shit and it's just really crazy to hear those words out of someone's mouth right it's fucking scary dude it's so So scary to hear someone talk about what they were doing like why they were doing it and it's just crazy dude those interviews i love those interviews because you still get killers and shit that won't ever talk but they won't admit to shit and stuff you know you just never get it out of them kind of thing right right it's like when when you look at um like Dahmer, for example, he did like that one interview. Yeah, yeah. It's like, n- don't you wish we had more mm-hmm. into his mind? You well, know what and, I mean? and that's what I'm saying because, like, when this dude went to jail for his crimes, he wasn't talking about shit. He was still kind of denying it and stuff. And then over time, he's just like, well, I'm obviously spending my fucking, I, I'm doomed in here. Like, yeah, I'm dying in jail, yeah. so I might as well just tell my fucking story. So, but when you actually get to hear those words as to why he was doing it and you know how he was doing it, oh, it's fucked, man. You're just like, damn, bro. Like you're sitting there talking to this dude, like he's just an everyday dude, but he's like 
telling you how he killed people and why. He, oh, it's fucked up, man. I love that shit. You just don't get to see that very often because a lot of these serial killers, like Dahmer, was such a shame because you know he obviously didn't get that time. He got killed in jail, right? Yeah, it's kind of a shame. Yeah, it, it's weird that that uh, Berlinger did <laughs> Book of Shadows, Blair Witch too. Yep. Right. Right. Yeah. It's crazy, but he's really good with docs. But even like Bundy, like if Bundy hadn't been executed, like you know, he probably would still. I mean, he'd be old as fuck right now. He really would be, probably in his eighties, I would assume. But uh, I mean, he could still be alive. But could you imagine hearing him tell stories nowadays? Yeah. Yeah, right. like if if they last long enough to where they don't that they, they're like okay with talking about it, you know what I mean? And being right. like, because you figure like the older you get, like you just lose giving a fuck, so you would probably be more open to like sharing. Right, right. Like he, he um, talked about shit, but it was never like what you get out of them now that have spent thirty years in jail, thirty five years in jail, and stuff. And you hear that shit straight from their mouth, and you're like, oh my god, it's like jaw dropping. It's crazy. Yeah, the Eileen um, Warren one. That's that it's on Netflix is pretty good too. Yeah, yeah, that's that story, man, has been oh, there's so many different Monster movies. is fucking great. Yeah, like the movie. There's so many documentaries. There's I think there was even a dateline back in the day on the Eileen Warren story. Yeah. Uh, um that mo- yeah, Monster. I, I actually kinda great. wanna rewatch that. I haven't seen it since it came out. Yeah. Great performance. It, it is a good movie. Yeah. Dude, she looks just like her. <laughs> the yeah. makeup that they did, but it's crazy how they took like this beautiful woman and made her so nasty looking. This is crazy, man. Yeah. yeah it, it's it's nuts. That needs a Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Charlize Theron. Yeah. 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 She she like, dude, that's insane. <laughs> but she looked just like her. It's nuts. Mm-hmm. She really did. All right. Can I see the Batman? I, I noticed that you watched it twice. What's with your ratings? Your first rating was like four stars, and the second one was like almost a ten. No, I went from an eight to a nine. Eight to a nine, so it's better the second time. Hmm. I still have some problems with it, obviously. Does it feel like three hours? Not enough. I don't think so. I just feel like there's not enough Bruce Wayne. I feel like it's all Batman and no Bruce Wayne. Why do it's you like care 10. so much about Bruce fucking Wayne? I don't know. That's what I like the balance between the two characters. I don't want to see Batman the whole time. Yeah, but the thing is, though, I, th- I th- like this is called Batman. It's this not isn't called Bruce Wayne. Yeah, this isn't really like an origin story. I, I think if you're making, no, or, it's not an origin. Story. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's not. So that's why you're yeah. not getting as much Bruce Wayne. I mean, if you're gonna make a an origin story, you're gonna have a lot of fucking Bruce Wayne in there because you have to have the, the Bruce Wayne. But in this one, well, we're the characters focused on are just like so different compared to like the Penguin. So different. In this movie, oh, compared fuck, to Batman I didn't even Returns. know the penguin was in it, you fucking dick. Well, the cat woman's really? in it too, right? Yeah, it's totally different than anything she's been in either. Yeah, it's yeah really, I, I didn't really know that. I didn't know that until a couple days ago, and I saw that the cat. I was like, really? I was like, holy fuck, yeah. crazy. So I, I'm kind of curious on this. It's very dark. It's very similar to. You could tell it was very influenced by Seven and Zodiac, very much so. Yeah, it's very Fincher like. I mean, it's super dark. I I, I really liked it. I, most people liked it. I feel like I haven't so. really heard anything bad, like notable yeah. bad shit about it. You know, so yeah, that's good. I think you guys should check it out. It's worth it. Yeah, I want to see it. Worth a watch. Yeah, I mean, one hundred and thirty-four million this weekend, which is crazy considering it's three hours long. I mean, yeah, me and that's Dylan, good. we're gonna go see it at probably maybe this week coming up here. It's just a matter of what days we can go i'm fuck i'm so yeah. busy i'm coaching ball a couple times a week. like i'm just busy every night so but we'll is figure it better it out. than dark night no it's second though hmm. second yeah it's pretty good yeah yeah sounds promising i was shocked at the running time it was like three hours holy shit man <laughs> yeah like, they three went, hours they went balls out on that so but i mean the running time doesn't <laughs> matter if the if it's fucking interesting and shit so yeah the third act is definitely the weakest part of the movie but I feel like they probably could have cut it to like two and a half and it would have been fine, hmm. but it it is what it is, yeah. obviously. <laughs> How's Pattinson? Oh, he's great. He's probably the best Batman, honestly. Really? Wow. Yeah. Michael he's King is my favorite. Yeah, I watched those two again this week. And I just hope that I, I don't see him as the fucking sparkly twilight dude when i'm watching that shit i didn't really I, I didn't really think of it though but like 
you know, with the lighthouse and shit. Like, I just, it's just characters so different. As that no, all. you don't. You like, don't at all. <laughs> but I know there's going to be parts in Batman where he is Bruce Wayne. And you're going to be like, oh, that's that's the Twilight Sparkly dude. <laughs> you know, it's like shit. Yeah, but he was in Tenet and Good Times. He was fucking good in Good Times. And yeah, I didn't see Tenet. I didn't see, I've, I mean, I've seen him in other stuff. But Cosmopolis. But the, pro, the pro, yeah, Cosmopolis. Movie. Yeah, um, which, you know, I thought, I haven't seen it since it came out, I think in 2012. So it's been a while on that one. Yeah. Um, but I, all I can really remember is because I literally got scarred from watching those Twilight movies, man. It damaged, <laughs> it damaged me for life, dude. Like those are, those are horrible fucking movies. Like they're bad movies, but yeah, it's a lot of, uh, a lot of sparkly dudes. So for, you know, five movies, I just watched a movie with, uh, a guy from the Twilight movies. What's it called? Uh, what's his name? Taylor Lautner. No. Well, well yeah. What the fuck happened to that guy? No. Um, Boo Boo Stewart. Mm. Right. It's pretty good, actually. It's called Those Who Walk Away. It's from 22. I thought it was decent. Yeah, I got to get on that. Uh, I'm almost at the end of my 94 run here. I got, I'll maybe watch just a few more and then I'm going to be done. So I guess I should probably get on that 22 train soon. Once I think things are starting to kind of roll out. So I'll get on that train. And I watched one called Cosmic Dawn. It was okay ditched i didn't like ditched very much i thought it was shitty to JP, be honest with you jp are you gonna get on that 94 shit or what because you're like fuck you're still like what 24 watches 25 watches something like that it's somewhere around there man yeah. dude like it's march yeah but we're not going until like may <laughs> probably like the beginning of may i would assume yeah right so yeah you well, got march april and then beginning of may it's like you don't even have two months so so say give yourself two months right now well, I, I don't plan on what like I've planned on getting around 50. Yeah. So I'm halfway done. Uh, I usually will ramp it up towards the end. I don't know. I, I've uh, I've enjoyed it for the most part, but I I've been I, I can't decide what the watch ever. And I don't know. I'm like, don't feel like watching any like foreign movies right now. Mm hmm. Like, I don't know. Well, I, I mean, I all the four. At, I mean, I gotta, all the all the Japanese shit that fucking Dave watched. Like, he must have watched like twenty five fucking shit, but half of them were fucking rape movies. It's like, dude, Rape Man seventeen. Like, I don't understand. Yeah. Like, I mean, honestly, dude, I I would watch those, but not in preference because I just know like none of those movies are gonna be like contenders for a list kind of thing. So I don't think any of them are making this either. So I watched yeah, Wolf I, last night again. I hadn't seen Wolf in so long. Like, I'd watched my DVD back in the day. Dude, but, I hate that movie. But uh, I don't. I don't think it's that bad. I honestly don't think it's that bad. I just I, I can't get into it. It's so damn boring. It, it's a it's got like such a good cast in it too, man. It's crazy. But uh, I started the I watched the first two parts of the stand. Yeah, that's what I'm on. So right it, now, so stand. you so you might as well just do your rating and move on then. Because you <laughs> right, don't you yeah. don't need to watch the bot the the latter two because you know. Yeah, the stand is it, the first two parts are really good in my opinion. I yeah, think they're they really are. good. They are good actually. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's it's a little slow going right now. I mean, I watched pretty much everything I own, so now I'm like stuck to streaming and things like that. So, um, I'm cheating a bit. I watched. But, well, I guess we all did. We all watched Surviving the Game, but it's not it's not a horror film, but uh, it's still fun. It's still a fun. If movie. it was a horror film, it would be probably my number. Honestly, two. <laughs> my, big, my biggest fucking complaint with that movie, man, and it always has been is they kill Gary Busey off too early because he's just like yeah, batch. He's batshit already. Dude. Like he, in real life, he's bad. He's like playing himself in that movie. He's just fucking nuts. And then he gets fucking killed like right away. I'm like, what the fuck? Like it's Gary dude, Busey, bro. The, and and the then the most annoying dude he talks about his dog, bro. Prince Henry it's is the, like, dude, that is one of the most amazing cinematic scenes ever. It's like so underrated. Dude, like, it dude, is so good. That story is so perfectly executed because it's told that's by that's somebody that's, that's actually crazy. Right. And it's like a crazy story. <laughs> <laughs> it just works so perfectly, man. <laughs> Yeah, and then shit. you got Ice T just looking at him like, "What the fuck?" Right. <laughs> uh, that movie, I love that movie, dude. Such a cl classic, so yeah. fun. That that's something that Kino needs to pick up and put on Blu-ray. It's totally a, a title that they would put out. It's a new Didn't line. Didn't Shout Factory do it? No, nobody's put it on. No, on no, it's been oh. in DVD oh, obscurity for past. Man, the DVD's been out of. I think the DVD's been. Yeah, out of print snapper forever. case. Yeah, it's, it's old, man. It's like an yeah, old release that never I got have any love. The snapper case, but that's too. new line shit, man. Like new line, come yeah, it's on, new line. Like they fuck their well, shit they, never comes out. Well, 
I would assume it'd be Scream Factory because Ciao. Alone in the Dark was new line. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, it, it would line. be it would be part of the Shout Select line. I, actually, that's a good point. They, that's that's totally like a Shout Select line movie because they yeah, put out colors. That's why I thought. Yeah, they put out colors on that line too, right? Which was Trespass, kind of, dude. They put out colors and Trespass. Yeah, Trespass is is my other favorite Ice Ice T movie from from well, the nineties. Well, Ice T does the he does the fucking theme song for for colors also too. So yeah. Um, yeah, Ice T and Ice Cube and Trespass, Bill Paxton, and fucking William Sadler, bro. Yeah, no, solid, it's, it's, solid a, it's cast. a great cast, and it's got a good soundtrack too, man. Just some good shit on there. Yeah. We got fucking yep, good. Ice T and Cube actually do a song together. They do the title track, Black Sheep's on there. Some gangsta. Sir soundtrack, man. in there. Just it's a good soundtrack, man. Yeah, yeah, so. it is. But you're, I, uh, but you're fuck, right. That dude. would go. That would pair up perfectly with those other films for sure. Surviving the game yeah. needs a, needs a good release, man. It, it, it's it's a good movie. It's a fun movie. So yeah, I used to watch it all the time back in the nineties, man. It was always on TNT. I used to have the VHS of it, and yeah, I, I still do have the VHS of it. I believe. Yeah, I don't anymore, man. Fuck. Yeah, too many moves back in the day. VHSs were very, very heavy to to pack around and from place to place. I have a Trespass DVD too, or VHS too. <laughs> hmm. Crazy. But um, yeah. But yeah, on that note of talking, should we talk about some pregnant whores? Some '90s <laughs> fucking action films with Ice T. Apparently, is the six degrees of Ice T right there. Um, yeah, let's uh, yeah let's get into these uh, featured reviews here on episode two hundred and twenty three. Damn. It's getting up there. It's getting up there, man. It's getting up there. So yeah, so we're gonna be back here with uh, with some pregnant horror here. Stay tuned. Yo, who this? Yo, Moods, it's your boy, the ill-mented funky child, calling you to remind you that the featured reviews on this episode contain spoilers. Aw, oh, yeah, man, that's right, brother. Thanks for the heads up, playa. Now go back to being an unproductive asshole. Fuck you. I tell your listeners to stop being so dumb, silly, sensitive. Yeah. And now, our feature presentation. All right, so getting into the featured reviews here on episode 223, themed pregnant whores. No, pregnant whore. <laughs> uh, I believe that this was the Patreon pick, right? Yes. So Demon Seed well, from 1977 yes. is a Patreon pick. Uh, do we know who that's from? I believe nope. it was... Um, I think it was I'll Mr. Lechem. If I remember I correctly. I think you're right. Mr. Mark. Sure Let me see. Mark Lechem. Mark Lechem. Okay. So the idea... Be, so we had this Patreon pick and we decided... Yes, Mark well, Lechem. Okay, so we, yep. we paired up with another film that had to do with pregnancy. So, of course, we uh, decided to go with Baby Blood from 1990, the French extreme film, I guess you could call it. Yeah, I would think it would be a French extreme movie if it came out during the time. I think mm. that's a fair, fair assessment. Yeah. I um, think you're correct. So... All right, so uh, Demon Seed from 1977, directed by Donald uh, Camel. Camel, um, I know this guy's name because he directed uh, White of the Eye. That's a film from the later 80s. Um, you guys ever see White of the Eye? I think Screen Factory and Arrow put it out on Blu-ray. No, I know it, he did performance with Mick Jagger. It's definitely on Screen Factory because I own it, but I've never seen it. Yeah, no, Arrow also put it out too. Um, it's it's a pretty good movie actually, and you know it's kind of shocking because yeah, this one came out in he did yeah performance with Mick Jagger in seventy, Demon Seed in seventy seven. He did a bunch of stuff with U two. Music, it's only music, twelve bucks on Amazon right now. Music videos and stuff, and then he did White of the Eye in eighty seven, and I believe that was the last feature. No, he did Wild Side too in ninety five, but uh, this guy actually committed suicide in ninety six. Um, it's reading in his bio that he that he killed himself, so it's kind of sad. So throw it a rest in peace at Donald Camel. Um, not much of a filmography, but uh, some kind of notable stuff, I guess. So interesting film, Demon Seed from 1977. Quick synopsis: A scientist creates Proteus, an organic supercomputer with artificial intelligence, which becomes obsessed with human beings, and in particular, the creator's wife. It's so, basically a lexicon crazy. It's basically what it is. It's uh, based on a Dean Koontz novel. Yeah. 
so as based well. on the Dean, I've never read the Dean Koontz novel. I've read a lot of Dean Koontz actually, but this is one I have not read. So I don't know how close it is to the, or how close this adaptation is. Nobody ever really knows unless you actually read them. So, um, but yeah, so th- this is kind of an interesting theme. Cause we like, we're going to call it like pregnant horror. Like when I think of like pregnant horror and like kid horror and stuff, like this one really doesn't have anything to do with like actual, like kids running, like babies running around killing and shit. No, like. it's like, it's like, technology horror yeah more than it, pregnancy it, horror <laughs> it's it's like tech it's it's yeah it's, it's kind of like a mixed theme it's it's inter- but it's like straight up kind of yeah like pregnancy it's just dealing with like pregnancy and shit but yeah so have you guys ever seen demon seed before nope no. okay so first time watches for you guys so all right well you guys uh gp what are your thoughts on demon seed uh well first of all it reminded me did you guys ever moods probably hasn't but jeremy did you ever see the movie smart house on from disney channel i definitely no. did not see that <laughs> i mean it's clearly trying to be fucking 2001 space odyssey i mean i haven't seen that but i know what it is yeah 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 so it reminded me of that because it's like kind of like the the super intelligent like house is taking over but in this case it's sort of like it's integrated into the house. And then, um, I think that like, I I think for me, like the, the problem with this one comes where it's like, I feel like the third act feels a bit rushed where I feel like if they move that third act back into the middle, it would have added a little bit more like tension and stuff to the Hmm. film, Hmm. like the, the whole pregnancy aspect and things like that. Um, it's really a maybe i'm just thinking that way because we're doing a pregnancy horror show right um but like i i I love sci-fi mixed with horror uh i never realized i did but but i really do and honestly for 1977 sort of like the whole artificial intelligence and stuff very relevant well yeah the the technology the technology that's showcased in the film is actually pretty pretty good you know it almost seems like it's way ahead of its time and stuff with just how the the house is literally run by an ai computer system by an alexa yeah, yeah, it's it's it, I actually saw it is Alexa. It pretty much is Alexa. It's exactly it is, what it yeah. is. But I mean, in nineteen seventy seven, posted this said something along the lines of like the true story of Alexa's origins. Or right, something. right. But I'm not even sure if the technology would allow you to do something like it, if you had the money to actually put that system in your house, kind of thing in nineteen seventy seven. I'm not sure if it was plausible in, in those times, but they definitely had the ideas there. So yeah. it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's pretty interesting to watch like how, you know, like do this and it's like making them coffees and doing all this shit. It's pretty, See, pretty I f- feel like they, they, they don't focus enough on this, like the scientific aspect. I feel like the whole movie is like in the house and they don't focus too much okay. on the other side of it. Right. I feel like they like mention it at the beginning, but after the beginning is right. done with, it's like they don't really go back to the wherever the hell they are. And so, so I've seen this movie a few times, and I I, I actually agree with you, G- or Jeremy, because uh, I never really thought about it before until I was watching it this time, and I was like watching the movie, and you know, I, like I said, I'd seen this movie, so I'm watching it with you know a critical eye, and I'm and it, the the main problem with this movie for myself is um, just in the story, it's like you know they've created this. Um, you know, this, uh, this AI kind of system that's, it's basically created as like a synthetic, almost like an organic type system, right? Where it can learn and it can like develop and shit like that. I like the whole idea behind it because the backstory is the reason why they created this type of system, uh, to learn things from the world and, you know, to learn things that humans basically couldn't learn is because, uh, the couple in this film, Alex, who's the husband, he's, um, you know, he created the system because they had a daughter that died of leukemia. And they want to basically, you know, cure cancers. And Find leukemia. a cure. Yeah. yeah. So they wanted to create this synthetic or this AI system that's synthetic and, you know, kind of builds itself, you know, organically by learning things. It can and stuff. learn. Yeah. So that's the big difference be- with this artificial intelligence is yeah. it has the ability to learn. Yeah. It, it can organically learn. And when it learns things, it develops and it actually creates like more cells. And it's it's kind of cool how they explain it and stuff. But the problem is, is that they get into it. Like Pro- Proteus is already developed in this. They don't really, they, I wish they had have explained The husband's it. not in the movie enough. No, no, he's definitely yeah. not. I, I agree. I, I think that the most interesting stuff in this movie is the sci-fi aspect. Like that's what I was most interested in in learning about and i i agree with both of you guys i think that if we spent more time with like the process and yeah and things yeah. like that it don't, would have been a don't you feel movie. don't you feel like you know when this movie starts like 
Pro- Proteus is already basically overdeveloped and it's becoming it's becoming so organic so human like that it's uh, it, it's, that it wants it, out it the box it becomes self aware right away well that's like, the it, thing it's not like a slow build up to where like I've, typically you would see in movies like yeah, this where it, I, it it's slowly over time getting stronger yeah i feel like in the the beginning of this movie the first act of this film should actually be more the second act right it it should have had a build up right to that right because it starts out where the second act is where this thing is already fully developed and I'm, it would have been cool to see the process of like how they created this computer system the idea and the ideals and the ideologies behind creating um you know this ai system that's you know organically self-aware. developing and self-aware yeah. and learning and like it would have been cool to to get that scientific background because what we get is yeah. the second act and the first act is already there and it kind of busts into it enough or it it, it breaks into it almost too quickly um and also there's something to be said about it slowly becoming more aware and and going against what it was designed for instead of just right away like because then you have this this more malevolent like feeling where it's like it's slow like there could have been more scenes of it doing things right that acting on its own because i just think the whole like the whole rubik cube design thing is fucking absolutely retarded i mean (laughs) It looks absolutely fucking retarded. I'm sorry. I think it looks yeah, fucking Yeah, I mean, it, it's stupid. It, it's 77. It is what it is, but <laughs> I know. Yeah, I mean, you it's, know, I yeah, mean, it's a little dated. I, I think that I think the motivations for this like, you know, I always think about the motivations for Proteus like, you know, wanting to to procreate and create life and you know, get out of this box and stuff because he's become so smart, so self-aware of what yeah. humans do he in reality. Well, that's the thing. Like, I think the main goal, of, like people are always like, well, what's the, what's the meaning of life? And I'm like, well, who really cares? But I think the main focus point for, for humans and life form is to procreate is to, to continue the life form. Right. And I, well, I, the, this I, I feel like that's kind of a focus in this movie. It's, it's really just about actually have parallels. Yeah. It kind of like, it's just kind of like, re, yeah, it does actually, you're right. You're right. And you know, I, cu- I couldn't help tell, but like the first time I watched this movie back years ago, I was thinking to myself going, you know, he comes off as being very malevolent, very, you know, kind of focused on the evil. Like, and that's kind of one of those things that it absorbed. Like I always took it as it absorbed, like all the evils of the world. And it's like, okay, I need to get out there and do some shit and stuff. It doesn't really focus on that. It's just more, it wants to, to be outside the box. It wants to be what we are, you know, wants to continue life and shit like well, that. But it's also the classic case of AI and and this is a this is like a uh, topic of a lot of AI horror and sci-fi films mm-hmm. is the AI realizes that humans are kind of pieces of shit and they're yeah. like well the best way to to save the world or, or to to make the world a better place is to eliminate the humans type thing you know right. what I mean and well, it, or to get to to grow and become sort of God essentially. But it, it's got a weird focus, though, right? Because if you look what happens in the end of the film when, you know, I mean, th- this one's a little bit hard to talk about without kind of going full circle, even with the end and stuff. But like I said before, um, this couple had lost a bait, like lost a child to leukemia and stuff, right? And it, it's funny because the whole film kind of comes off as this this AI malevolent um organic computer that's like kind of forcing the wife you know it's it's almost like a rapey computer computer in a sense right like he's really forcing it on upon her because you know he's like threatening to kill like these kids and he's doing all this shit and then she finally gives into it but he more or less basically rapes what does she do what what's the relationship with that little girl which one the one that comes to the house yeah that gets fucking shocked to death uh well she doesn't die that was a well that she was... doesn't die i know she doesn't die but the annoying bitch um the the wife is the wife is a um psychiatrist i believe and i think she he did she just kind of coaches her yeah i would assume well because the kid is obviously a fucking lunatic right she's like fucking freaking out and shit but yeah she comes to the house for like you know you know therapy therapy and guidance and stuff like that so so obviously she doesn't want her to be harmed and stuff so she kind of gives into the whole computer system Mm -hmm. raping her and stuff but but it's kind of funny because i remember watching this film back in the day thinking to myself going okay this is kind of interesting uh, this computer system almost like absorbed the evils of the world and became, you know, almost like a demon in a sense. And I'm like, man, is demon seed like it, to me, I don't think the intention was to rip off something like Rosemary's baby at all, but it kind of comes across like that when you first see it, it's like, okay, th- you know, the, t- the pregnancy is being forced upon her being reborn. But then when you see what happens then in the end of the film with the baby that's born, 
it's like completely it's it's almost confusing because so the last line in the film is you know i'm alive it's yeah it's morbius's voice and it, but it's in his voice. But the funny thing yeah. is, it's a girl. It's a chick. It's yeah. literally a clone of the daughter that they lost. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So, so essentially, like he goes from being the kind of this malevolent force, enforcing this in pregnancy on her. But then he gives them back what they wanted in the first place. They just wanted their daughter. It's literally uh-huh. a clone of the daughter. See, I didn't get that. Right. So it's no? it's, it's kind of an interesting uh-huh. thing that happens in the end. It's like. You see him as evil, but then he gives them what they want yeah. mm-hmm. in the form of a flesh baby. Like, it's really kind of fucking, it's really unique what they do. It kind of fucks with your emotions a little bit. You're like, okay, bad to good. Like, what just happened here? So it's an interesting development in the movie. It really is. I think that there's like, a, you know, the way the, the way the narrative is told in this, I think, is a little bit clunky at times and stuff. But I do like a lot of things that are going here. I, I'm a big fan of like these scientific, technological, especially these ones back in the day where you're like looking at the technology and you're going, I doubt they could have done that. But it's still really cool to see. You know, I think the I, I think it's pretty well done in that in that in that aspect. And Make stuff, me but, a coffee, please. Yeah. I told you not to put cream in it. Like <laughs> but no, I, I, I love the. She made I, you his fucking coffee. <laughs> I think the reason that I connect with like science fiction, especially with horror, is just because it's endless. Like the imagination is endless, so you could l- really come up with all kind of shit. And and, and when it kind of mirrors reality, mm-hmm. that's when it's like really cool, right? Like because in the seventies probably seemed a lot more far fetched, but like now it's pretty accurate yeah. you know what i mean so it's it's pretty cool that i mean hell dude think about it i mean i most of us didn't even get a computer till the late 90s early 2000s so when whenever you have these yeah. highly advanced computers like people watching this and back in the day are probably like you know what the hell is this but it, when you look at like alexa and like all these like um you know voice activated things that talk to you and stuff it seems sci-fi um but it's reality now which which makes this pretty cool uh i think that i watching this kind of reminded me that i i really like sci-fi it made me want to watch the fly actually (laughs) Mm -hmm. um but yeah i thought i thought it was going back to the thing about rosemary's baby though like do you think the title of this movie should have not been called Demon Seed? Like, if, uh, the, the, I mean, everybody watching it would expect it to be some sort of like. Demon. Um, yeah, I, I know, think I think the title or, is referring to it, it. It's supposed to to kind of drive you one way to think that this thing is very malevolent. Like, it's I I, I take it when you're watching the film, I, I, I think that like, as it's learning organically and stuff, it's kind of absorbing like all the bad shit. And so I think that's the way it's supposed to be. But I mean, where it ends up, it's not really, it's not really a demon seed because why, I mean, if you wanted to be reborn as a demon, you wouldn't reborn yourself as, um, a female clone of the child that these people lost. You right? might, if you need them to take care of you, but I, 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 I mean, that's a good point. I mean, they see what they have lost. And of course, they're going to probably, you know, take care of it like, you know, they once did. But yeah, maybe, maybe familiar. You keep but then it familiar. Again, the novel is named Demon Seed. So I guess. Yeah. <laughs> You're stuck. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's not even like it's a metaphor. I don't know, man. It, it It is. It is kind of an interesting title to where the movie goes, though. It really is. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, maybe it's just supposed to miss. It's purposely misleading. Maybe that's the way it is. It's purposely misleading. I mean, in a sense, because like I said, the whole film, you're kind of thinking that this thing is a little bit bad because, I mean, let's face it, when you force someone to have a to baby, to have a baby and shit, like it, it's not the nicest thing in the world. It's kind of demon-esque, I guess. Evil. Um, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Like, I, I kind of see this film as it could be as a Rosemary's baby type thing. And it also can be almost like a cautionary tale of technology. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, you, you no. put it, putting all your, I mean, putting it, all your marbles, the... putting all your trust in the technology sometimes can be good and bad. Backfires. And, it, and it, yeah. you know, I mean, when you put your whole, you, you put everything 
that you have into technology, I mean, you know, sometimes it can backfire on you, man. I mean, look at today, man. It, yep. It's this. It's very rev- relevant to today's world, though. It really is. Big time. You know, I mean, if you put well, all your faith the, the into technology, of- it can it can go either way. It can really kind of go either way and stuff. And you know, I mean, if technology is not used correctly, it can also turn turn on you. It can turn bad. It can turn evil, kind of thing, too, right? So I think it's a little bit of a cautionary tale on on technology and and just keeping mm-hmm. yourself grounded in reality, which is. You know, we still have to use our minds to do things too, right? So I think there's a little bit of kind of double meaning here. But, um, and also just in general, like AI is scary. Like, I mean, the whole Terminator franchise is essentially that. Right. Um, and the, the idea of, and it feels like we're not far off of it too. Like, the, like, I don't know if you guys, have you guys ever, like, looked into the history of like chess? And when they started making chess computers, no. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, they did. Didn't I'm they, not a nerd. Didn't they start doing that like in the '60s? Wasn't the first ones invented in the '60s? Yeah, yeah, but they 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 essentially couldn't beat real people. But now it's like pretty easy, you know. Right. What I mean? IBM, fucking look at Watson. He fucking knows everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and the, like you look at that and you're like because they can calculate so fast more than the human brain, you know, it's interesting. But the the thing is, if they, they have the ability to learn, that's where it gets really scary, right? Because then you have the this concept of like, what if they, uh, you know, see, eventually see us as a problem, you know? Um, yeah. I, I think the AI stuff is super scary. Um, speaking of Demon Seed, by the way, uh, the, sto- the story, it, it says that Dean Koontz rewrote it in 97 so there might be like two versions of this or something mm, crazy hmm. i did i did kind of chuckle that the the computer the house computer is named alfred <laughs> like <laughs> is that just is that just a common thing like you just have to name your fucking butler or whatever or your the person batman, working for alfred yeah it, that's exactly what i brought it because we were just talking about batman too but it's just funny mm-hmm. alfred right i remember when fucking watson won on jeopardy bro he fucking crushed everybody who? IBM created a computer called Watson, and it went on Jeopardy, and it fucking won against humans. <laughs> what? That's crazy. Yeah, dude, that was a big thing back in. The, I'll I'll send it later, but mm, yeah, it's interesting. Yep. Yeah, this movie kind of predates DNA and stuff. They just they, they talk about certain things with like genetic codes and you know developing humans through genetic codes, and they they they, they talk minorly about you know all that type of stuff in this, but of course DNA is never brought up because it's still pre DNA days and shit like that. Right. So, so in a sense, it does kind of feel dated like that because, you know, we know that's the, the key to life right there is the DNA. So I know it's something I noticed that they didn't bring up. Yeah. Well, when fucking DNA came about, a lot of fucking crimes were solved. <laughs> Because, yeah, uh, well, that's the thing. A lot of people, people that went would to jail just unload the, their their semen everywhere, just thinking, you know, there's no, no, no way to tell that it came from you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> all they could do was his sudden, blood type. It was his blood types yeah. back in the day. It's kind of crazy, actually. It was why they were talking about this on Dateline a while ago too. About there's so there's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cases that have been overturned from all these people that went to jail, like you know, in the 70s and 80s and early 90s and shit. That you know, the, they're like probably s- thousands. They're bro. like seriously, go check this out, man. They have they, they put them away on these on these uh, blood types, right? Oh, I have the same blood types, but it's not the same DNA kind of thing. It's bullshit. So like, there's like hundreds of cases that are being overturned just on these convictions that were such bullshit, like just mm-hmm. almost circumstantial. But oh, you have the same blood type as this guy. Well, you're going to jail. How many people have fucking A type blood? Like, give me a fucking break. Right. It's yeah. ridiculous. It's so yeah, stupid. D- DNA really changed a lot when they when they were able to. Oh, it, match DNA. It, it flipped the uh, it flipped the system upside down, right? Because now they're 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 backtracking on thousands of cases now. There's so yeah, many but people it's getting also it's also getting people caught too who oh, never got caught. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. But it just goes to show you how shoddy the police work was back in the day. Like, oh well, this guy's got to be he's got to be guilty. You know, we have pretty much no hard evidence. Uh, circumstantial evidence is uh, half assed, and you know he's got this. He's got an A A B blood type. Guilty. Yep fucking crazy man absolutely crazy he was in that area yeah yeah <laughs> well that's <laughs> sometimes they're not even in the city at the time like well i doubt yeah. i doubt you were in milwaukee Guilty. at the time yeah right he was in it he was in a 50 mile radius of the crime it has to be him yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah man <laughs> oh fuck you know i mean overall 
I do like this movie. I just I wish the story with the computer was developed a little bit more. I feel like I said like I said before, it's I feel like we're watching the second act and beginning of the film. It's like this computer's already ready to go and stuff. And I do kind of feel like there is a misstep with with Alex's character also. Like we don't really need the whole you know, the whole separation angle to this because it never plays a factor in anything. It doesn't matter. They could have been a happily yeah, married. Yeah, he started at the end of the movie anyway. Yeah, like it, it could have been they could have been a happily married couple. He's just off doing his job and she's at home. It does like the whole separation thing and them having problems and stuff didn't really make a lot of sense. And the only reason why they kind of put it there, you can tell is because they, their marital, their marital problems happened after their daughter died of leukemia and stuff. And he basically dedicated his life to creating this, this system to, to, to cure, you know, the leukemia and stuff. So put a stress on the relationship, but I get that, but it doesn't really play into the fact that she's, you know, essentially going to be raped by a fucking organic AI machine. It's like, you know, I mean, but you know, overall, I, I still think it's a pretty ambitious film for 1977, you know, sci-fi technology film that you don't really yeah. get a lot of these, you know, it, it's pretty well done in, in the aspect of, you know, just it's eye opening. the techno. I mean, can you imagine watching this in 77 being like, that is so damn cool. Right. Like nobody That's had never going to happen. No. <laughs> now look where so. we are now. We get a little bit of Garrett Graham in the film, which is kind of yeah. cool. Um, I always like him as an actor, man. He's he's in lots of... He's just a fun guy. Child's Play 2, Use Cars, this movie. He's in lots of stuff. Yeah, he's in tons of movies, man. Um, but yeah, he's just, he's got kind of one of those faces you just never seem to forget. You know? Yeah, for sure. Um, he was at Slam when we won, I think. I, I, he was, actually. I never got to... I yeah. don't think I got to meet him, but, but yeah, no... Uh, I like I always take it like, what I remember from him is uh Terror Vision, man. He's the funniest character ever in that movie. Yeah. Oh, good old Terror Vision, man. Um But uh do you guys have anything else on Demon Seed? I mean, I guess I'm gonna have to put the spoiler thing at the beginning of this because I kinda had to talk about the end of the movie. Um It's an interesting movie for sure. I do think it's pretty of- interesting, you know, like once the baby is born it does have yeah. an outer kind of like robotic shell and which is very much a metaphor or terminator s- symbolic <laughs> to yeah to you know what came first the chicken or the egg kind of thing because they're like literally peeling back the layers right and it's like holy shit there's yeah. a fucking flesh baby underneath this the, uh the chicken came first right so i mean it's just kind of giving you that idea it's like oh this thing got born but it's real. So, I mean, there, there's some interesting aspects to it. I, I, I it's Are a little bit clunky. Why? why? Why do you think that? Because if it was just an egg, it wouldn't be able to hatch without the warmth of the chicken. Not unless it was Boom. in the right, in the right. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I guess, but that's, that's all. It's I called think. a hen JP. Guy, it, it does everybody. help. It does help if the chicken sitting on the egg to keep it warm and stuff. But I mean, that applies to, you know, not to every region. There's some regions that I think they'll, they'll, they'll be fine. So, yeah. Ratings. All right. Well, we'll start with GP since he started off his thoughts. Yeah. Uh, Demon Seed, it's, uh, oh, by the way, the Warner Archive transfer is very solid. Very yeah, solid. it is. It is. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Demon Seed, I had it in the collection for a while, was really interested in checking it out. I think that it, it, we want to watch more sci-fi stuff and that's always a good sign uh whenever you're watching something you're like yeah i like this um i don't think i don't think it's like great or anything like that but it's a good movie i gave it a seven jeremy yeah i'm in the same boat i'm at a uh i'm at a seven too yeah that's exactly the same rating that i have on this one too is a seven doesn't happen very often where we have sevens across the boards but I guess it's better than Lucky going seven six six six. Yeah, seven seven. I think it's appropriate. <laughs> I think it's appropriate. It's an interesting film. It's not mind blowing, but it's entertaining enough. Um, I don't think the uh, whatever you want to call it looks that retarded. Um, yeah, the giant Rubik's cube. Yeah, the the giant Rubik's cube. I guess is kind of what you. But I, I think honestly, the the baby at the end looks a little bit more ridiculous than yeah than that at yeah. first. But yeah. I can see that. But uh, yeah, so of course, um, that is uh, Demon Seed from 1977. <laughs>
All right, so getting into the second featured review here on episode 223. And this one, we are going to go to the 90s. 1990s specifically with... Um, and we're going to France. Yeah, we're going to France with a film called Baby Blood. Baby um, ass blood. Have you guys seen this one before? I have. I have. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, 1990. What else? Well, this one's directed by Alan Robick. Uh, I don't really know what else this guy did. Did he do anything? Well, he did a sequel to this film that came out in 2008 called Lady Blood. Really? What? Actually, no, he that. did not do the sequel. Sorry. But there is a sequel that came out in 2008 called Lady Blood, and it stars Emmanuel Escarraro or whatever. And it takes place 15 years after the birth of her monster, Yanka, turned her life around and became a policewoman. But new murders and bloody crime scenes put oh. her on the trail of evil. Oh, oh well, He's fuck me. to get her. I did not I, know. Did you guys know this? No. I did not know that. No, because I, I was going to comment on the fact that I thought you were actually joking because there's a scene in this film where they come outside the diner and there's a there's a, a poster for Baby Blood 2 coming soon. It says Baby Blood 2 coming yeah, soon. I, I what I love that. about this movie is that she's always fucking bloody and nobody fucking notices. Like her clothes are always like full of blood and everything like that. And everybody's just like, oh, there's actually. Well, I think I think this movie has some beats of comedy and I think that's yeah. part of it. No, no, yeah, it yeah. definitely is. It, it almost comes off as like, you know, she's living in her own little world, but we clearly see that there's things happening with her that are people are seeing and shit. So, but yeah, you're right though. Like there's tons of scenes where she's just covered in blood and people are like, Hey, how's it going? Yep. <laughs> it's like, okay. Okay. So baby blood from 1990 snops this when a strange, when a strange creature creature crawls into a woman's uterus, she becomes a killer in order to feed the tiny terror growing within her. Right. So okay. this movie was out of print for so long. I wanted to see it because it's French. Because you know I love French. When yeah. it came out on Blu-ray, I finally picked it up and I watched it, and I was disappointed. And um, I'm still disappointed a little bit. I don't what? think what, it lives what, up what, what's very this, much. What's disappointing about it, man? It's like I just don't like. I, I just it's not the biggest fan of it, to be honest with you. I do. Think There's I no downtime. Kind of boring. I honestly, boring. there's no downtime, bro. It's it's all splatter and, and gore and and that's fine but i think we know based off my review of dead Al my rating of dead alive yeah i rather i like story and stuff i just feel like this movie i mean there's some decent story here too there, there's a core eh. to the story this is like here. cut three months she, she's more pregnant and the baby's more well, no. a little bit more developed and he kills it's well like, that's all it is but there's also the concept of the cycle you know, the of conversations life. that they're having and also, like, th th she almost starts to get motherly towards the baby, as as most people do with things growing inside them. Sure. Um, That's right. And there's also the whole concept of essentially it wanting to take over the world or, like, repopulate the, the planet with its kind. Uh, so there, there's some story there. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's, it's you know, it's about, yeah, being reborn. It's about evolution and, you know, just survival too right i mean this thing needed to be reborn movie, let me say i i just think i was i had high expectations for it when i first watched it and i don't mm -hmm. think it lived up to high expectations it doesn't focus a lot on it gives you the it gives you the uh, the prologue at the beginning of the film basically about yeah. you know evolution and and survival and things like that and and then we get this little weird creature thing that can obviously talk to its host telepathically you know what it reminded me of moods yeah elmer yep <laughs> Didn't it? I knew. I, it's yeah. funny that you bring that up because I was watching it last night, thinking to myself, "Going, JP is probably going to say bring up Elmer." Yeah, it damage. reminds me the way it talks to her and stuff. Yeah, it's oh, it's a telepathic way, voice. It's almost the same shit, man. It really is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the, the, by the way, I, dude, I, I threw on the dubbing just to check. I do that a lot of times. No, it is you. fucking awful, dude. The dubbing on this is so fucking bad, dude. That's I, even like the Shaw Brothers movies I've been watching. It's like I don't. I watch the OG track. I don't watch the English the, dub. You know, the, the only time I ever watch dubs on movies is if I'm watching kung fu movies or Godzilla movies. Because for some reason, it just I don't know, man. It just it adds to the experience. But but with something like Baby yeah. Blood, you can't watch the dub because it just doesn't work. 
It just simply does it's not awful. work, man. It's awful. And like I said, like Kung Fu movies, I have no problem with it because the thing is with Kung Fu movies growing up, watching a lot of those shits back in the day, they were always dubbed and you could only watch the dub versions. So you got so used to watching these like terrible dub overs and shit. So it was like Godzilla, mm-hmm. right? It was like everything yeah. was dubbed. Everything was dubbed and that's just how you got accustomed to it. But, but anyways, yeah. Um, it is funny when you flip the audio to the... Uh, <laughs> to the dub and you're like oh my god this is fucking terrible what's funny it's on the english you had to choose the fucking the default settings english it's annoying really i don't, I think mine came up as french mine really. wasn't no mine yeah. was on the french yeah. yeah you have the kino yeah the kino huh hmm. that's weird yeah so yeah but um good oh i was just gonna say so basically i mean the short long of the story is we have our main character which is what what the fuck's her name again um yonka she has nice titties i could tell you that. oh yeah i was just gonna say that yonka's like one of those stacks she's she's one of those like really sexy women right she doesn't have the most attractive i know you're oh i thought you're gonna say teeth well her yeah well yeah that but well a lot of she doesn't have the most attractive face yeah but her titties are nice <laughs> so no, Yonka, she, has, she has very nice breasts yeah so basically the the short long of the of the story is here is she's uh she works at the circus at this traveling circus kind of thing and she works with the tigers and shit anyway she gets treated like shit there too by her boss and she doesn't really like her job and stuff anyways one night she goes to sleep this fucking creature kind of slides into her bed up into her she wakes up in the morning sick and uh this thing's kind of talking to her and now she's got basically got to feed this thing human blood, but it, but this is where the movie or so, so so she essentially you know packs up her stuff from the circus and just takes off. You know, like she's like on a mission to go get blood and she's just killing people and more or less kind of random and stuff. I mean, kind of this, this thing tells her what to do at times. And stuff, like I said, but, all it does it's like three months, find somebody, kill them. Three months later, a little bit further into the story, kill. It's just the same thing over and over again. I kind of feel like the, the thing by is, the end, I was just like. Yeah. Whatever. The the thing is with this movie that kind of drives me nuts a little bit is that the focus of her mission to feed this thing inside of her, this parasite, I'll just call it a parasite, to feed this parasite is to basically drink blood. But there's there's moments in here where she just basically kills people and like a kind of like it doesn't seem like the main focus is well, we don't get to really see a lot of that of her actually like drinking blood and shit because like the scene where she fucking runs that dude over with the car and shit. Like, she just starts killing people, right? right. Essentially. There's Her, scenes the in this film. The funny part about that scene is, is she knocks him down, and then she turns the headlights on, and he finds his glass. He's like, oh, thanks. Yeah. And she fucking crushes his ass. Dude, that yeah. part is so brutal. Like, like, there's a little shoddy editing with some of the action sequences and, like, some of yeah. the bigger stuff, like car hits. Hey, and you can bl- say Texas Chainsaw was influenced by baby blood. The ending. Just saying. <laughs> But you know there what? There was a baby blood massacre on the bus. Yeah. But I mean, it doesn't it doesn't focus too much on her mission to drink blood, right? There's scenes uh-huh. where she does, but there's more or less like like the dude where that dude's hitting on her and shit and she's and then he's like, "You know what? I'll never leave you." He's like, "I want to marry you." And she's just like, "Fuck you." And starts stabbing the shit out of him. It's like this <laughs> like fucking kill scene and shit. But yeah, essentially yeah, it becomes, I, I it definitely kind of, think there's a aspect of her that's like uh I don't know if it's controlled by the 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 thing but i it's definitely a murderous tendencies yeah in there as well because i just think she gets that from the circus and she was fit, obviously abused at the circus so well, i just feel she, like it's probably you're, piped up you're right up rage she definitely has some uh built up uh rage inside of her and stuff especially with you know the dude that she crushes on the wall like after she hits this guy it's so fucking funny dude i don't know if you guys ever caught this but when she gets out of the vehicle and basically hacks his head off with the fucking uh i don't know with some kind of crowbar or something like that when she kicks his head off and the head rolls down the sidewalk can you notice the glasses hanging off the ear that are still attached to yeah. the fucking head <laughs> yeah it was actually that was actually a pretty good head <laughs> dude that shit makes me laugh every time it's just so and, but that's what i'm talking about because that is just a rage scene she just fucking gets road rage kills this dude and just keeps uh-huh. going on like she doesn't even drink the blood or nothing and there's there's a couple scenes like that in the film like you know, I will say there is one scene in this film where, you know, got you, you guys know my opinions on dream sequences that are just in the middle of mm-hmm. movies. And so they, 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 I always feel like dream sequences are put there just to, to do something like they did in this film, even though I felt it kind of worked because it had something to do with, you know, birthing in her stomach and shit. But I thought that scene was actually pretty cool with the arms coming out of her stomach and shit. Oh, it was super cool. Yeah, I, it, I it's love a cool that scene. effect. It's a really cool it, effect. And it, yeah. it makes sense for the movie, too, yeah, because it it's, it's sort of um, the fear of what could happen to her. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like the one in The Fly. 
Mm -hmm. go back to the fly again with the birthing of the maggot. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I mean, Um, but, but but, I mean, there is a development here and you're right. It does it. This, the narrative is told in chapters. It's like a month later, but it gives you that to give you a sensibility of where she is in her development too. And how, and you're right. She becomes a little bit attached to this thing as time goes on. Like most, most pregnant women probably do. But when you're first pregnant, you don't really have that attachment. But when, you know this thing's grown inside you for months and months and months and you've been given this thing life, you become more attached to it. And that's why they do the headers of like a month or three months, six months down the road and stuff. And her attitude changes yeah. a little bit towards the end and stuff like that. But, you know, I mean, it's it's essentially just a splatter flick, man. It really is. It, it does yeah, have this narrative. It fun. does it does have this whole evolution, you know, of life and, you know, survival aspect going for it and stuff. But the middle part of this movie is her going around just killing fucking people. It's, yeah. it's pretty entertaining. And she's hot. I, I love the one where uh, she's in the apartment and with the fridge and, and fucking there's all the blood splatter on the wall. And then the chick comes in. Yeah. She locks her in the fucking room and... <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I but, guess the people are obviously oblivious to fucking everything in this movie. Man, that dude though, that that guy that's like hitting on it, that guy's a weird fucking guy, man. Yeah. I yep. always I always feel like uh, that restaurant scene and shit, like those scenes kind of go on a little bit too long, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, it, I mean this I mean this movie's what 87 88 minutes long, but yeah, those there's a couple scenes where they just kind of go on way too long before she ultimately just ganks the shit out of this dude. <laughs> It's fucking ridiculous, but um, yeah, I mean, there's not really a whole lot to say about this, man. She, there's full frontal nudity. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. There's some full I'm curious frontal about the sequel. I don't even yeah, know I, I'm existed. just curious that it was made. Yeah, I didn't even know it existed. Mm-hmm. And the fact that she came back to play the character again, so that's interesting yeah. to me. Yeah, that's the interesting part. I wonder what she looks uh, like I, 18 years later. That's interesting. I know. I, 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 my thing is like with these, um. Uh, it would be 14 eight, no 18 years later yeah um I, I like pregnancy horror in general like something about like uh something inside of you that you don't want there is mm. is scary to me and I, th- I think that like this one plays it for for comedy's sake but it, it i did really get some like uh brain damage vibes from it and yeah. I, I love brain damage, so <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I really liked it. I think this movie is a blast. Like, I, I, this is my second time watching it. I liked it more this time watching it. Yeah, because in brain damage, it has that whole you know drug addiction kind of undertones to it and stuff, right? It's it's got the commentary of that and shit. And you almost get that same type of vibe here, where this thing almost seems like it is a drug to her and stuff, and it, it becomes where she's almost doing it willingly at points because. It's not like he told mm-hmm. her to run the dude over with the car. Like she becomes that, <laughs> she becomes that killer and stuff. And it, it's, yeah. yeah, you know, it's just, it's not just him just like directing every fucking scene that she does, you know, kind of thing. Right. So, right. But yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a, it's a, I, I thought the, the lead performer was good. Like you said, full frontal nudity. Um, Nice tip. I, I like the circus opening. You know, you get the sense that this character is like maybe abused or beat down and, and yeah. like sort of has no purpose in life. Like most people in the circus, you see that in Nightmare Alley. I feel like it's just like the circus is for outcasts. Yeah. So he's an outcast. It's true, though, because a lot of people that do join the circus, I'm not saying this is for everybody, but, you know, it is historically known a lot of people that do join the circus are people that have left their houses, run away, and, and or been outcasts in life and stuff. So the people that run these things take advantage of that, right? They take advantage of these people being very vulnerable mm-hmm. in life, and they're easy to control at this time because really these people just want to be part of a family. They want to be around people kind of like themselves and shit, and so you get these people mm-hmm. that run the circus, they take advantage of that and she's the product of it right there. You know, unfortunately, I love that era of American history, like the, the circus eras and stuff like the traveling circuses and things yep. like, that's why I love nightmare alley so much. Um, they just capture that, that section of America so well. Right. And so I have for the movie. Dude, yeah. I, I think my favorite scene, but, though, I mean, man, the same era. I love the fucking ambulance scene, dude. <laughs> Oh, that's my favorite scene, too. Pulls that fucking dude up. 
dude, he so... gets fuck it. It's there's so much gore in there, and then yeah, she's but... like lays on. Th- she goes back in the ambulance and lays on the fucking table. It's just gore everywhere, <laughs> just chunks and nasty shit. Uh, and then like even the scene where the the baby's in the car and the fucking dudes like she looks out the window and dudes fucking legs are flying to yeah. flopping through the air. <laughs> I always still uh, think that like the ending of this movie is a little bit shocking. What actually happens yeah. with the bus. And so it's just, it's kind of, it, you just don't really see that coming. Right. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of, it's bizarre, but I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense to why you had to do something like that to get that parasite to where it needed to go and stuff. And I don't know, mm-hmm. yep. but it would have been interesting if they had a shown, if, if they had it done it differently and it, maybe her actually, I don't know, like even birthing i don't know they, they kind of like even on the scene where the parasite kind of goes into her, they don't really show much which is kind of shocking considering this movie is so splattery and so bloody and gory and stuff that it, yeah they didn't really go that and it's just to like, show a, that. like a green string and that's it yeah and even with the birthing <laughs> scene and you know you know they they held back a little bit on that stuff but yeah the ending i always find is a little bit shocking to what happens because it's very abrupt and you're like oh shit wow that just happened <laughs> so but i will give it to him man the blood looks really good in this is pretty decent it's entertaining man it's one of those films i think that you could you know you could you could sit around and watch this thing even with the the french language with a bunch of people having some beers and shit you don't need to you don't need the narrative you know just watch it for the gore and the full frontal but yeah it's it's an interesting film but yeah i I knew you were gonna bring up the elmer thing man i knew it i knew it right Mm -hmm. away it's the same thing it's the same thing um yeah, I don't have much else. I've I, I've reviewed this movie like three or four times now. <laughs> I actually yeah. did this not I've in the last thirty one days, but the the last one that I did, I actually reviewed this for the. I think it was when the Kino Blu Ray first came out, and I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'll. I do remember it. it was like so hard to get for so long, and then. Yeah, I was excited to rewatch it. Yeah, so I was like, fuck it, I'll, I'll yeah, review it for 31 days. I actually picked it up on the last Kino, or like two sales ago from Kino for like 10 bucks, but. Yeah, me too. Um, I, I had originally seen it on Shutter before it got that Kino release. It was on mm. Shutter. Shit. I think Anchor Bay put it out back in the day. Yeah, they did. I still got that old DVD. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Jeremy. Yeah. Rating. Baby Blood. Like I said, I feel like after Dead Alive, you know, splatter films are fine. I just like a little bit more story in them, I guess, even though JP kind of told me there's more story i gave it a six it's, it's fine i mean there's not I a mean, ton of story but that, i think there's more than no story yeah. i mean i'm at, it gives you a prologue you know you you get what they're getting at through the whole thing and stuff it's just it's a cycle of life man it's the evolution of survival it's fine it has good gore and nice boobs and so it's worth a six at least yeah i really like this movie um i'm gonna give it an eight actually because it's it's a pretty good drinkable popcorn flick with a lot of blood and gore and there's really no downtime in this to be honest like i don't find it boring at all i do think that there is a couple scenes that go on a little bit too long but overall it's pretty fucking entertaining man it's it's pretty entertaining and i mean i just take it as a splatter flick so it works perfectly for myself and i will say like i said the blood and gore does look really really good in this and there's a lot of blood there really is a lot of blood so yeah hands off for that it's like an og extreme french film oh yeah for sure well for sure jp me me all right uh yeah i am a massive slasher fan and splatter films sort of have a similar theme where it's just like there's gonna be a kill or something bloody every few minutes that shit works for me it always has it's one of the reasons i got into horror i do like movies with plot as well um, but I, I, there was enough here for me. I, I, I find this movie incredibly enjoyable. I, I like the performances, locations. There's some actually good shots in it as well. Um, there's some a little bit not the best editing and stuff, but mm-hmm. overall, I, I mean, I, I like this movie a lot, and I'm twins in with moods. Uh, I give it an eight. Sweet, sweet. All right, so that is going to do it for baby blood from 1990 and that's also going to conclude episode 223 i think we talked about at the beginning of the show so we're going to be back next week with possibly a baseball themed killer sh- killer baseball <laughs> show 
I guess we'll, we'll, we'll work on that this week. We'll see what's up. So, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> Killer baseball flicks. <laughs> yes sir. Uh, man this this show actually came at a pretty good time like considering last week's theme with uh with the psycho bitches and then we got some some pregnant horror whores yeah pregnant it's like whores. women in horror month See, really i would i would make the thumbnail horrors yeah we never actually planned this out it just actually happened like this it's kind of weird yeah but yeah so yeah anyways um I guess that's going to conclude the episode. You guys have anything else for the outro? Mm, no, if anybody has a Blu-ray copy of Maximum Overdrive that they would like to sell me for a reasonable price, <laughs> hit me up on Facebook. Just even the cardboard. Even the cardboard. I'll take even the cardboard. <laughs> All right, man. Let's get out of here. All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening to episode 223 of the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror podcast. Also, if you want to follow the man Moods himself, you could do so at youtube.com slash mood 616. If you want to follow the smell of Mexican, you could do so at youtube.com slash double shot J. Follow me on my channel, youtube.com slash NESRuler22. And fuck Dave. And uh, follow us on Patreon, patreon.com slash 22 Shots podcast. And please. Join us on Facebook, facebook.com, search bar, 22 shots of moods and horror podcast. Follow us on Twitter, twitter.com, slash 22 shots podcast. That's good enough. Thank you, everybody, for listening to episode 223 of the 22 shots of moods and horror podcast. We'll be back next week with some bats and balls and bashing balls and bats. All right. With the Pete Rose special. We're, we're just going to teach, Rose we're going to teach J- uh, JP the history of Pete Rose. <laughs> oh, Dave's going to love that. I can't wait. <laughs> right. <laughs> Dave's going to be like, what? even Dave, I would assume, knows who fucking Pete Rose is. Dude, uh, Dave doesn't know shit about sports. Yeah. But yeah, but I bet you he still knows who Pete Rose is. I'm at least a sports fan. He's from Ohio and he was from fucking, he played on the Reds. That is very true. That is true. All right, guys. We're out of here. Deuces. Peace. <laughs> Five minutes later. That's all, folks.